Welcome to my channel and thanks for taking a look at my video. This is going to be what would an all-out Russian strike on the United Kingdom look like. This is more for dis demonstrative purposes. This isn't meant to be a necessarily a realistic scenario. But in this example, Russia is going to expend its entire nuclear stockpile striking the United Kingdom. It's going to be a mixed hybrid attack between 25% roughly military targets and 75% civilian and industrial targets. Russia is going to use mixed arsenals of ICBMs, both their mobile and silo based ones. There's going to be sub launched attacks with both sub launched ballistic missiles and sub launched cruise missiles with nuclear tips. And there's going to be some aerial bombers. And some surface naval vessels with nuclear-tipped cruise missiles. So it's really going to be a multi-faceted attack approach. And this is only going to look at the Russian side. So this isn't going to factor in any counter-strikes or any you know, NATO allies or anything. Really just a de demonstration of how destructive the Russian nuclear stockpile is. If it were to target, especially this, what would be considered you know, an island nation, that would be pretty densely populated. So, or as the 19, was it 79 movie, The Warrior said, there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. So let's take a look at this. We'll set this here to run at 10 times speed. We'll start to see some launches from the ICBM sites and then the sub sites. Those are going to launch first. We also see some fighters taking off. Apologies, a little nasally today. So if you've seen my other videos, I may be a little bit off. As always, this is, I've adjusted the forces in the simulator to be accurate to what's currently deployed. So it's very important because what comes in the base simulation is not an accurate representation of actual deployed nuclear forces. Let's go and zoom in now as we see more and more. I know I've had a few commenters from the United Kingdom, people who watch several of my videos, and so. Now, in a real world scenario, here they're striking Northern Ireland, you know, naturally part of the United Kingdom. In a real world scenario, you'd have the geopolitical aspect that almost certainly you're going to have a large impact on Ireland itself. I mean, you would strike in the United Kingdom, but you're striking the island of Ireland too. So would Russia make that decision with Ireland being somewhat of neutrality? It's hard to answer that question. If this many nukes are flying around at that point, I doubt you care much about neutrality of nations. Or humankind at all. So one of the things the purpose of this isn't, like I said, to represent a realistic scenario. Russia would not expend the entirety of its nuclear force um, when it comes to nuclear stockpiles and deployment, I mean, the United Kingdom basically has one nuclear sub deployed at any given time, and so it represents a small fraction of the NATO nuclear capabilities, whereas the United States represents the vast majority of it. Having said that, these videos like this serves just as a reminder of that overall capability. I mean, look at the sheer number of warheads coming in. And so as we have these cavalier attitudes, there's a UK military commander that basically said, you know, a couple months ago, um, we shouldn't be worried about a nuclear conflict with Russia. Well, that's a really stupid take. Now, this isn't to say that you allow Russia or any other country 
and I'll say that as an American, even the United States for that matter, to play nuclear brinkmanship games and to not confront them, because eventually at some point that's going to come down to just surrender, you know, basically, you know, you, they can keep threatening you to the point that you say, well, I'd rather surrender than risk a nuclear conflict. I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that we can't take a cavalier attitude about it. We're seeing that now with Ukrainian incursions into Kursk and stuff that we run the, you know, continuing to run the risk of a further escalation. Let me speed this up now a little bit. Now, when you come to a realism aspect, not just that the number of warheads here, but here we're seeing a ton of Russian fighters and bombers just coming in and bombing with immunity. And the naval vessels, for that matter, like the surface ships. Obviously, there's air defenses. There's, you know, um, NATO fighters that would be intercepting these. You know, it's not ever going to be just a clear-cut case like this. In fact, in most of my simulations, I try to account for that. That, you know, the, the aero aspect is not going to be like this. But, again, this is more of a visual dem demonstrative video than meant to be a realism. But you could also look at it if Russia's striking with their nuclear forces, they're probably hitting airfields and other stuff that there may not be aerial interceptors to take out these fighters. There may not be air defense sites. They could have been all wiped out or be wiped out during this process. Interestingly, because of this nature, the like, there's a uh, wrap this up here. I think that's it. It's funny to say that's it. <laughs> okay. Let me scroll this over here. 56 million. Another 57,000 in the Isle of Man. Now, because of fallout, it looks like France is going to suffer a certain amount of casualties, close to 50,000. Ireland, looking at 171,000. But high level, 56 and a half million. And this is 2020 numbers, but 56 and a half million out of a population of 64 million. So you're looking at what would be the virtual destruction of the United Kingdom. So if Russia did launch all of its nuclear arsenal and there was no interception, so basically everything su successfully launched with a certain failure rate built in. Um, so there's always a certain failure rate built in that don't actually launch, but, but say there's no interceptions, no air defenses, intercepting any cruise missiles, no, f you know, allied or, you know, uh, Royal Air Force fighters intercepting any of the bombers. You would look at almost hundred percent population death because this is initial casualty. So whereas this, it, you know, it would look like there's about 9 million survivors, Famine, death, you know, famine, fires, disease, lack of medical care. You'd be almost looking at a virtual population wipeout. Um, look at the fallout. So, there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to, you know. You'd probably be looking in a few months, maybe a handful of survivors. Maybe a few hundred, maybe a few thousand. Um, 
So that's a stark reminder um, why there's no uh, never a place for a cavalier attitude towards nuclear conflict. That's how quickly um, compare that to the London, you know, the London Blitz, which took months. This isn't even a day. This is a few hours, six hours to be exact. So it's a stark reminder. Thanks. Um, check out some of my other videos. I did my World War Three scenario, which is meant to be much more of a realistic escalation. Um, so I just did week three. You can see weeks one, two, and three all in the comp, um, all in the uh, description below. So please check that out if you're interested in a more realistic scenario. Thanks, everybody. Please like and subscribe.